Welcome to this uh, video tutorial on how to use near infrared spectroscopy. Um, NIRS is a modality for uh, monitoring of newborns, especially those that are critically ill, and that may provide you with further information about their oxygen delivery, consumption, um, and perfusion. Uh, so hopefully this uh, pragmatic uh, video will allow you to have a better sense of how to install the NIRS and how the monitors work, and you will find on uh, the NICU Weebly some important resources. You will find the NIRS material in the cooling cabinet. Um, so when you open the door, they are here. So you have the monitors that are all here. So we have six monitors in total, and you will find here the boxes of the sensors. Uh, and each patient will require two sensors, one for the pre and one for the postductal. The pre is at the level of the cerebral and the postductal is at the level of the renal area. And we wanna make sure that if you plug your uh, monitor, you have your USB key and you have uh, your box for um, putting your sensors um, in the monitor. So for uh, the placement of the nearest monitor, you need the nearest monitor, you need it to be plugged, you need your sensors, which come like this in a package. There's a sticker on top of it, and they have numbers in order to be able to identify them easily. Typically, we will put the sticker on the sensor, like a sticker number one, and then we would put the sticker also number one on the connector. So we know that it connects to the number one here whenever we have to unplug or replug. As mentioned, you have here a USB key that allows us to record the raw signal of the patient during the monitoring. We have the sensor box that is plugged on the first wire here. There is the opportunity to do a second box if we wanna do a four nearest monitoring. So sometimes there are babies with concern of localized seizure uh, and we do wanna do a right and left uh, frontal uh, nearest monitoring. And some centers will also monitor both the renal area and the mesenteric area. So that's why there's the opportunity of having uh, two boxes connected, but uh, here locally we will be using only a sensor at the level of the uh, frontal and one at the level of the renal area for pre and post monitoring. You want to make sure that your monitor is well plugged here and that this is on, so I means on, uh, for uh, the machine to be rolling on um, not the battery but rather on the plug. So whenever the monitor is plugged, and in here you can see that this plug is going to the wall, you will see this blue light. If the blue light is not on, it means it is on battery mode, which we don't want. So to put it on, we press the power button, and then the monitor will start lighting up. Once the monitor is on, uh, you can see that you have different options. New patient, previous patient, state time, next menu. So typically we would start at new patient. Let's say that you have unplugged or closed down your monitor uh, and you restart your monitor with the same patient. You could just do previous patient and it would restart recording right away. But we'll create a new patient. And then here typically what we would do is put the MRN number. So I'm using the arrows and we'll select zero. So select. And then we will just use an um, MRN of zero, 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 and then zero. And you can see that the patient identifier is four zeros. So based on that, I can do next row, next row, next row, next row, and then select done. And now um, the data will be recorded on patient zero, 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 zero. Here it tells you that their alarm is on. So let's say you want to put alarm on or off, you press here. And now you can see that there's no more alarm because I pressed off. Oops, now it's off. So here we have sensor one, sensor two, and if ever we would have sensor three or four, they would appear here. And the trends of sensor one and two would appear along this uh, panel here. So it shows you here the uh, near saturation value that is being measured and as well as time on the X axis. It tells you here now that the sensors are not connected, so we will connect sensors. And um, 
after the connection of sensors, we'll go through a few more steps. So we are using here sensor number one. Sensor number one will be the one used for uh, cerebral saturation monitoring, which technically is the preductal in some of the congenital heart defects, uh, but also provides idea about the regional saturation and level of the brain. So if you have a baby with HIE at risk of seizure, um, uh, the nearest might be indicating a drop in the venous saturation. There's a lot of oxygen consumption during the seizure event. So um, for the uh, installation of the sensor, um, we would typically remove the little sticker that's under it when it comes out of the package and we would place it centrally just above the eyebrows um, so that it uh, monitors at the level of the frontal area and frontal cortex. We typically solidify with some Mepitac that we try to put to avoid um, the areas of the eyes and so I put one below and one above. So that's for the first sensor, which is the sensor at the level of the brain. For the sensor at the level of the kidney, so here, number two, um, we would do a similar fashion in terms of securing it. So I would take some Mepitac, and I would, before even it, applying it, prepare my sensor. So one below and one above. And now, for this, we would typically turn baby gently and we identify the zone that is above the iliac crest. And above the iliac crest, we wanna localize this zone and really apply it at the dorsal area at T10 to T12 and make sure that it's close to um, the midline area at its tip. It can be on either side. These sensors needs to be uh, pulled out every 12 hours uh, and the skin needs to be uh, monitored for irritation. Typically babies won't necessarily do any reaction to the sensor, it's not a burn. It typically might be some pressure issues. So that's why we wanna relieve some of the areas of the skin a bit like we would do with any kind of saturation device. Uh, and that's especially true if eventually uh, you, we would use this in the premature babies where they're much more sensitive. Uh, and by doing monitoring of the skin, typically um, we have not had uh, any issues with that. So that's how to install the actual near sensors on the baby. Now I will show you how to plug them on the box. So you can see that we have sensor one here that we would identify with one of the little stickers. We would put one on here. And I would take my box here, that is the box connecting the sensors to the monitor. And I would just plug my sensor number one inside the zone for sensing here. Same thing for sensor number two would be plugged here. And then we would start having a recording. So a few elements is uh, the first time you take the sensor out of the package, you can try to warm up a bit the sensor uh, within your hands before application. And you wanna make sure that the skin is relatively clean. Uh, so you just wanna try to wipe out with some of uh, water, uh, um, medium temperature water, not, uh, you don't need to scrub anything like you would do for the AEG. Uh, you don't need to uh, use any kind of abrasive. You really want to gently clean the skin um, with some uh, water on a little towel, and then you can apply the sensor on, a, on the dry skin uh, to allow the contact to happen and so that it's actually um, uh, well adhesive. Um, we're going to look at the monitor. So on the monitor, uh, here we have the trends over the course of one hour. Um, you might be interested in looking at the trends over the course of a longer period of time. And here you have all your menus. You can go in next menu, and one of the things you can do is a time scale. By looking at the time scale, you can choose. The scale is currently over the course of an hour, but you can choose to have it over two hours, four hours, eight hours, 12 hours. Once you've selected 12 hours, you just go back to the home screen. 
and it changed your scale over the course of 12 hours. So you'll be able to see the trends. You can choose also to change your limits. So here it sets at 40, where the alarm would be set up for either the 40 blue, which means the cerebral, or the 40 gr uh, gray, which means the renal. So if I would want to change my alarms, I would go in my next menu, user configuration, and I have here the upper alarm limits and the lower alarm limits. So I would go to my lower alarm limits and change it maybe to 50, and we could maybe keep the one number two to 40 or also change it to 50. Since these are numbers that have been associated with poor perfusion in the newborn population. And now you can see that the alarm threshold is at around 50. And when you're looking at the trends on your graph over 12 hours, you would be to, able to easily see if some of these trends are going below the baseline that you're concerned about. We can stop. So a few other important elements. Uh, the sensors are not MRI compatible. Because they're quite expensive, uh, we uh, would like to keep the same sensor um, for the same baby for at least seven days of monitoring. And if ever you feel that uh, there's issues with the particular sensor, please uh, reach out to your TL or reach out to um, some of the RN educators uh, to discuss if we switch or if there's still the benefit of continuing the monitoring in the patient, uh, uh, depending on the discussion with the medical team. And remember that the nearest values are providing you with information that is like a vital sign. It needs to be taken into consideration of the clinical status of the patient, the other vital signs, and what is happening to the patient. So if your nearest values are going down, it tells you that uh, basically the oxygen consumption uh, is increased, or the delivery of oxygen is impaired, or uh, there is actually a problem with the blood flow going to, to your brain or to your kidneys. Uh, so you can think of, for example, a baby seizing, oxygen consumption is increasing, so your cerebral saturation net might be dropping. You can think of a baby that's desatting, so if you have lung disease, if you're starting already from an arterial oxygen saturation that is very low, you cannot expect the venous saturation to be high. So that also would drop. Uh, and if you're having a patient, for example, with severe anemia because there is a big bleed, um, there's less hemoglobin available to carry oxygen. And so that might mean that once this hemoglobin arrives to the organ of interest, the organ needs a lot of oxygen to function and it might extract a lot of that oxygen from whatever hemoglobin is available. So anemia, for example, can be a cause of also dropping cerebral saturation. So in that sense, it's very important to go back to your physiology and whenever you have trends to understand what is happening with this number uh, and why and what is it telling you about your baby. Sometimes it's not going to be worrisome and you just monitor. Sometimes there might be some uh, other monitoring elements that you might want to add on. You might want to do some labs, make sure your CO2 is okay, your hemoglobin is okay. Um, and sometimes you might look at the blood pressure, the perfusion of your patient, uh, and it might be an extra indicator that something is happening. So we often say that values below 50 should raise an alarm, especially if they're consistently below 50 but also the trends. So if you see that your trends are significantly dropping or uh, going very high, uh, so dropping more than 20, 30 points, um, you should also raise an alarm and then start thinking about the physiological processes behind it. Let's say you had to restart your monitor for any reason, like example, you close the monitor for MRI. Instead, so after reopening the monitor, instead of creating a new patient, you can just click previous patient and right away you're ready to restart recording. This is the example of a patient uh, that was recently monitored with uh, the NIRS. As you can see, um, currently we are on battery mode since uh, the blue light is not on. And you can see that we have in blue channel one, which represents the cerebral saturation, and in gray, white, channel two, which is the renal saturation or postductal saturation. This is a patient who, um, as you can see, we set the baseline at 50 for uh, the zone of alarm. And um, you can see a scale over the course of four hours. And over the course of the four hours, you can see that actually the cerebral saturation were relatively high on this patient, which uh, got progressive increase in sedation and decreased level of activity, uh, which makes sense because then the brain extracts less oxygen. And you can see that this patient who at some point had 
low blood pressure, um, had low renal saturation. And as the blood pressure increased um, because of installation of measures, such as the use of inotropes, uh, the renal sat started uh, increasing back up. Uh, you can use, here you can see the status of your, batter, of your battery. And then if I do next menu and time scale, and I increase my time scale to 12 hours, go back to the home menu, I can see now the trends over the course of the last 12 hours uh, for this patient. And you can see that there are really rare times where actually this patient has values that are critically low below the 50 trademark. Once you're done with the nearest monitoring, we would ask you to wipe down the monitor with uh, sterile, the cloths and uh, bring it back to the uh, cooling cabinet uh, in the, um, these two shelves of um, this area. So on the Weebly, if you go in the search button and write NIRS, you will find important elements. Um, one of them is the NICU quick reference. And one of them is the NICU medical guideline. So we will open both of them. The NICU quick reference is really um, a spiel about, you know, what's the material, how to use it, what are the steps, and reminds you about how to plug the sensors, where to put the sensors, where to chart the information, and how to uh, notify the team, as well as special considerations regarding when you use phototherapy, which might bring some interference, uh, and then the fact that NIRS are, uh, sensors are not MRI compatible. The medical guidelines are providing much more information and details. Um, these are providing information about principles of NIRS, as well as uh, an algorithm to go through whenever your regional saturation at the level of the brain or the kidneys are dropping or that are quite low, as well as if they are increasing or they're quite high. So what could be the reasons that actually your venous weighted saturation and hemoglobin um, of oxygen starts dropping? Uh, is it because there's too much oxygen consumption in the context of increased metabolic demand? Is it because the blood flow to that area is decreasing for many reasons? Is it because there's oxygen delivery that's impaired or is it because of artifact? So these are the questions to ask yourself whenever you're seeing trends that are changing in time. You will also find within uh, this document a uh, much more detailed step-by-step -step of how to you know, create a patient. Um, and how to place the sensors on the patient for both the brain and the kidney for pre and post ductal. And you will find information about how to chart the cerebral and the renal saturation on our current uh, charting scheme, as well as information regarding uh, alerting the medical team. There's some information about troubleshooting. Uh, so we invite you to read that. Um, and the fact that uh, the sensors may be used up to seven days. I'm hopeful that uh, this will be um, of, of good use for you. You can also find on my website, www.neocardiolab.com, a whole section about near infrared spectroscopy for further resources. On this one, you will find a presentation talking about uh, near infrared spectroscopy, as well as some of the literature out there um, talking about uh, um, studies that have been done in the neonatal population. I thank you for your attention. Um, currently, super users are uh, Olga, the NNP, Stephanie and Elisa, the RN educators, and myself. So if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to email us. You can email me at gabriel.altit at mcgill.ca, and I'll try my best to answer your questions. And we are expecting ongoing feedback uh, from you all in order to find proof the protocol and find proof uh, how we are integrating this technology in our patient population. Thank you for your attention.